Hello, teachers. So with all the distance learning going on, I thought I would do a quick tutorial on Google Meet and three different ways to start a Google Meet. And one way that can help with a little bit of security, one concern that teachers at my school have had have been about students being able to get into meetings either before us or sticking around after us and potential issues with that. So I found one way that can eliminate a lot of those potential issues. So to start, we'll do the one that probably most people are familiar with, which is scheduling Google Meet through your calendar. So once you're logged into your uh, Google account, you can go up to your Waffle, your app drawer here, and just go ahead and go to your calendar. And you're gonna see in my calendar that I've already got a bunch of meetings scheduled uh, for my students so that they can see when I'm planning on going on to discuss things with them. But you'll just go ahead and create an event. I'll go ahead and go to create. And you're going to title it whatever you want to title it. You can select your class down here. Now, if you're going to open this up to multiple classes, this really isn't important. It'd be really more for your own information. And so I'll just call it a test meet. And then if I want to add the actual meet, what I would do is I would go to my add rooms location or conferencing. And that's going to give me an option under add conferencing it's going to put my Google Hangouts meet here. And there is my code that I can copy and I can paste in Google Classroom so that students can view it and students can get in. The problem with doing it this way is that if students click on this link, they can join the meeting, even if you're not already there. And for some people, that's an issue. So I like to post it about five minutes before I'm going on or right when I about to, I'm about to go on. And then after I'm done with the meeting, I go back into my classes and I delete that link. That way they would have to have found it in their browser history or still be in the meeting to find the link. It's an extra few steps. It's not that big a deal for me, but it takes time that I don't really want to put into that and effort. And I don't want to forget or get distracted or have an issue have that not happen. But that is one way to do it. You would just go into your classroom and you would post that link. The advantage to this is that you could post the same link in all your different classes or in multiple classes. So all those students could access at the same time if you're going to be covering the same content. So that's one way to do it. Now another way to do it if you don't want students interacting with you would be to do a live stream where you would give them the instruction but they couldn't really interact with you depending on your purposes that may be something worthwhile for you to investigate. Another option, which is relatively new, would be to go into your Google Classroom, and I've set up a test classroom here, and if you go to your settings, your gear icon in the top right, and you scroll down, you're gonna see Google Meet here. And the first thing you would do is click Generate Meet Link. What this is gonna do is generate a link and automatically turn it on so your students can see it. So when I do that and hit save, what's going to happen is in the header of your classroom, there is now this link here. So you can click on this. Your students will see the same thing. They can click on this and join directly into the meeting. This has the same potential issue as doing it through your calendar, which is that anytime this is visible, students can go into it, meaning that if you have a meet, and you conclude the meet, you may want to go in and turn that off so this will not be visible to them until the next time you go ahead to do that. The other, in my mind, downside is that if I want multiple classes to have access, each class has its own code. So I would have to enable this in one and still post in the others, or I would have to schedule separate meets for each individual class, which at this time is not something I want to do. But for those of you who are doing that, that may be really useful for you. And it's, it's pretty simple to do. Again, just go back after and turn it off so that students don't constantly have access to that link. Now, the way I've been doing it recently, and the way that I've found is a little bit more secure, is just to go directly into Google Meet and start a meeting. And I've been telling my students that we're going to use the same code for every single meeting. So rather than using a link, they join with a code. So I'm gonna just call this Brown Test. And I would hit continue. And this would bring me into a meeting just like it normally would. 
Now, so that you can see what it looks like on the student end, and so I can show you why this is nice, I have a student account open. I'll do a split screen once I get this started so you can see what the students will see. And one thing that's really nice uh, for them to be able to do. So I am going to go ahead and turn off my microphone so we don't get any feedback on this. And join now. You can see it says nobody else is here, so I'm the first one here. That's one advantage to this is that doing it this method, even though there is a code here, you can see at the top, doing it this way does not allow students to get into the meeting before I'm there because I haven't initiated a meeting yet. So I'm going to go ahead and split screen this with my student account so you can see what they would see. So I've instructed them to go in like they normally would, go into their waffle and open up Google Meet. And they're always going to enter in the code that I've given them. So even though the exact meeting code will change, the nickname will always be the same. Now, my students have it set up where they cannot start a meeting. They can only uh, enter a meeting. So I'm going to click Use a Meeting Code. Again, this is my student account on the left-hand side. And I'm going to put in Brown Test and hit Continue. And this is only available to students that are within my uh, domain. So other students won't be able to see this if they're outside. So you can't have just random people or people that are not from your uh, dot whatever your domain is for your district. So they would go ahead and join just like normal. And so now, they're in the meeting. Now, in order for this method to be a little bit more secure, you have to be the last person in the meeting. So if you have students that don't want to leave on their own, hasn't really been a problem for me, but if you have students that don't want to leave on their own, on your console, which again, for me, the teacher one is on the right here, what you can do is click on your list of participants here, and you can go to that particular student, click the arrow, and you can remove them and remove. And so they're going to get a mes message saying they've been removed. Now they could go back to the home screen and put in that code again, and then they could rejoin the meeting. However, it'll take them a minute or so to do that. Now, in the meantime, if you, I'll just return this student to the home screen because I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to end my meeting. And I'm going to close this screen. And I timed it. And anywhere between about 25 and 40 seconds after I end the meeting, kind of depends on the buffer time of the Google Meet at the time, but I found 40 seconds to be really consistent. That somewhere around 40 seconds, again, sometimes a little bit faster, that meeting code is no longer valid. Since my students cannot start meetings, they can only join meetings. If I wait until 40 seconds comes up, feel free to jump ahead to that time, and I punch in that same code again, this meeting is no longer going to be valid. And they're going to get a message that says they're not allowed to start a meeting anymore. So, 40 seconds. So let's go ahead, use a meeting code. I'm going to put in the same code, brown test, that I did before. Continue. And it's going to tell them, you're not allowed to start a meeting. So now my students are gone, and this meeting is closed, and they cannot go back into that meeting without me being there. However, the next time I'm ready to do a meeting, I can do the same thing again. I can go ahead and Google Meet, and I can put in the same code. And as long as I give it the same nickname, and they use that nickname and I keep it consistent, my students can always get into the meeting. So I just have to let them know, hey, at this day, on this time, I'm going to be doing a meeting. Use the code for our class and jump on in. And you can even do that with different periods. Obviously, you give them all a different, a slightly different nickname and just be consistent with that. And in my mind, not only does it make things more secure, but it makes things easier for me because I don't have to go and post a new link every single time I want to do that. I don't have to go back through and delete the link 
And in my mind, it just makes things a little bit more secure and a little bit simpler, both for me and for the students as well. Again, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below so I can address those for you. Talk to you soon.